Warwick, Fiddlesticks, Nunu, and Willem. What do all of these champion reworks have in common? Is it that their original concepts were dialed up to 11? Could it be that their updated gameplay maintained the simplistic beauty of their original kit? Perhaps it's their sleek new designs, challenging their character stereotype instead of just embodying it. Maybe it's their substantial increase in play rate and popularity. All great options, but which is it? Yes! I don't think it will come as a surprise to anyone. These are some of, if not the best, full visual and gameplay updates Riot has ever put out. All of these reworks had a clear goal in mind. They knew what the original concept was trying to do, but at the time was limited by the design decisions and constrictions of early League. While not all reworks were handled as perfectly as these three, others like Volibear, Evelyn, and Swain do a great job of amplifying the champion's thematic fantasy. But because these kinds of reworks change these champions' play patterns slightly, they tend to alienate their original player base. This is especially true in cases like Mordekaiser, Galio, or the Poppy rework, where almost the entire champion is deleted or in Aatrox's case, your champion is actually deleted. The best reworks, like Fiddle, like Warwick, like Nunu, are the ones who still feel like the champion that you know and love, but with modern tools and designs old League could never offer. The two previous reworks we got were Volibear and Fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is one of the best ones we ever got, so I'd say we're on a pretty good track for champions who need full VGUs, and trust me, there's a lot who need it. Too bad productions of full reworks has halted almost entirely. The last rework we got was Volibear who came out in May of last year. That's over a year ago now. And the fan voted Udyr rework won't be out till January 2022 at least. So I'm expecting probably August 2022 sounds about right. But there's a light and a dark side to this story. Finally, a brand new VGU to break the monotony of our seven anime characters in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mundo, the madman of Zahn, is finally here, and he's... <sighs> okay, it's it's not bad. It's not really good, though. But it's not bad. <laughs> but it's not good, either. But why is that? Why is the Mundo rework such a mixed bag? Well, to do that, we need to go over the four key parts that make up a successful rework. Lore. Does the champion have a solid narrative, whether it be heavily remastered to match their new thematic direction, or is it an expansion of their old narrative to help push their story forward? Design. Does the new character design make sense, whether it be a full visual overhaul or a deeper exploration of that character archetype? Visuals. Is the personality of the champion probably conveyed through their voice lines, spell effects, and animations? Gameplay. Has the champion been brought up to modern standards while still staying true to their previous version's iconic abilities? With these criteria, we can more accurately assess the successes and failures of the Mundo rework, and where he falls on the scale. So let's start this off with the lore. In the old lore, Mundo was but an infant when he stumbled upon the Zonate Asylum. Horribly grotesque and purple in color, the scientists saw Mundo as not a child, but something to be studied. They would later discover Mundo's fascination with pain. Not only did it not bother him, he liked it. It felt well, good. And thanks to his insane regenerative abilities, any damage dealt to him would be healed within hours. Mundo grew to love the doctors who tortured him daily, and wanted to be just like them when he grew up. When he finally came of age, he proceeded to cure every patient and doctor within the asylum of their sickness. Having no more patience to help, he grabbed a lab coat, his favorite meat cleaver, and ran out into the streets of Zahn to start saving as many people as he could. Now, this is just my opinion, but to me, Old Mundo had one of the best bios in League. The idea that this horrible monstrosity is actually just genuinely a nice person underneath just trying to do good for people, but he's literally too stupid to realize how horrendous his actions are. It's so fucking funny. And that's the point. Mundo is League's quintessential comedy champion. And while we have champions like Trundle and Kled who are funny and do have below average intelligence, none of them are so stupid to think cutting off someone's arm would somehow make them feel better. Now let's contrast that with his new story, which really didn't change that much, with a few exceptions. 
Instead of Mundo entering the asylum as an infant, he was already fully grown. Instead of him always looking the way he does and us just not knowing why, he was once a normal person. Hi, how are you? Instead of always being crazy, he was actually once a well-mannered, all-around cheery enforcer of a Zonite Kembaron. Often blissfully unaware of the toes he was stepping on, it wasn't long before he had stepped firmly on the toes of his boss. I don't know if this line of his bio is literal or not, but I find it very funny if you take it literally. He was still experimented on in the Zonite Asylum, but it's explained in this news story that it was the these experiments that turned him into the big purple lad we know now. Instead of wanting to be a doctor, his mad driven mind and sued by the experiments causes him to believe that he was just always a doctor. I guess. He still kills everyone in the asylum in hopes of curing them, but the key change here is that while he does his best to save people, he knows when he fails. Whereas Old Mundo would throw a knife into someone's brain, walk over to the rotting corpse and think, Yeah, I did it! I cured him! All disease! He's good! Better now! Good job, Mundo! New Mundo would more than likely attempt an actual surgical practice, like a heart transplant, and fail miserably. He's got no idea what the fuck he's doing. The news story paints him more as a tragic character, one previously caught up in the mob, not necessarily a good guy, but with someone trying to do their best to make things right, who proceeds to get mixed up with the wrong people and ultimately gets experimented on by a crazy Zonite scientist and turned into a mutated chemtech monster. He now lives his life trying to help people, but is all too often consumed by his insanity. You know, now that I said that character synopsis out loud, it kind of sounds familiar. Almost like there's another reworked Zonite champion with the exact same story. Warwick. It, it, it's literally Warwick. The problem with giving Mundo a tragic backstory is that it takes away from his conception as a comedy character. We no longer have the mystery of where he comes from or why he looks the way he does. We no longer have to wonder what happened to him to give him his powers or how he became so mentally deranged. A lot of the fun of Mundo is we just didn't know why he was the way he was. He was just... Mundo. Instead, he's now your typical run-of-the-mill man-turned-monster scenario, a character archetype that would have honestly been perfectly welcomed if the Warwick rework didn't come out over four years ago. So far as lore goes, I really think they missed the mark. They dumped the goofy and confusing origin of the original Mundo in favor of something more tragic, generic, Warwick. It's clear that by giving him a tragic backstory, they were attempting to make Mundo more relatable, more human. Something also clearly emphasized by his new So let's get this out of the way first. What should the new Mundo look like? The problem with designing a new Mundo is that pretty much everything that makes him unique is already occupied by an existing Zonite champion. Mad scientist doctor? We have singed for that. Bio mutant slash living weapon? We got Zack for that. Monstrous mechanically enhanced experiment? We have Warwick. How does this keep coming back to Warwick? But if there's one thing that really makes him stand out from the rest of the Zonite crew, it's his idiocy and his humor. And while we do have funny champions like Malphite, Kled, uh, different kind of funny. No champion in the league rosters is much of a blundering blockhead as he is. So in my eyes, the new design and the rework as a whole should really stride in that direction. Really go wild on the exaggerated body parts, make him be able to twist and contort like any slapstick character could. He's league's comedy champion. He should look the part. I was very excited to see how crazy they would go with this crazy character. I mean, it's Mundo. What's the worst they could do? Jesus fucking Christ. Wow, broken record here. The ace boy doesn't like sexy things. Wow. That's only half true. A lot of the time, sexy and attractive characters work well. A character like Evelyn makes perfect sense to be sexy because she's a sex demon. Her whole point is trying to seduce people, so being sexy is part of her character fantasy and narrative. But champions like Kaisa or Silas, characters who have been broken down, beaten up, fighting for their survival their whole lives, come out looking like supermodels. It's just, I, uh, what? So why are these champions designed to look sexy if they don't add anything to them narratively? I mean, the answer is pretty fucking obvious. Money, 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 money. What frustrates me about designs like these is that they're completely profit driven. Why bother experimenting to include different character types and body shape when sex sells? It's why nearly every new champion for the past three years has been some variation of sexy anime character. And as bad as the whole sexy anime character situation has gotten in League, I never thought it would get this bad. I never thought we'd get to the point where Riot would start turning monster champions into sexy anime characters too. At this rate, I'm just expecting Cho'Gath's eventual rework to look like this. No, no, I almost forgot. 
there. Not only is this new Mundo an obvious representation of Rat's current, well, if it's sexy, then it must be good character design mentality, but it creates a disconnect from the character, both old and new. It doesn't match the slobbering idiot Mundo we knew before, or the tragic man turned monster promised in the news stories. However, I will point out, old Mundo's not good, not by any stretch of the imagination, but that happens when your model's 11 years old. <laughs> And there are some things I like about New Mundo. I like the idea of him having an infinite supply of medical tools and a bag he carries around with him. I actually concepted something like this back in the day, although in that case it was a children's backpack, but still, I'd like a little bit of credit where credit is due, you know, to boost my ego on my terrible art. I like how he forgot the name he used to have and got Mundo from reading the tag on his straitjacket upside down. Even though in reality that doesn't really make a lot of sense in the League world because it was written in Zonite and he's in Zon, so how does he understand the English alphabet? It's a minute detail. The main takeaway here is that, to me anyways, it feels like the design team working on Mundo wasn't allowed to go far enough. Just look at the concept art we were shown. They had some really wild and crazy ideas, especially Head Mundo. So to see all these unique concepts go to waste in favor of something so boring, generic, and obviously pandering is just... It's disappointing. So now we're on strike two. The lore changes didn't make any sense for his character, and the design is generically sexy to power the horny profit engine. With this much going against him, the people in charge of handling the rest of the Mundo rework would have to knock it out of the park. They knocked it out of the fucking park. I don't know how, I don't know who they got on the animations team, fucking Pixar McGibley man, but holy shit, it's everything I wanted. I'm convinced the execs at Riot only gave their okay on the initial character design and literally forgot to check in on the animation team because they went fucking wild, bashing his head into the turret, flailing his arms about crazy amounts of squash and stretch. He looks like an absolute bumbling goof. And that's exactly what I was hoping for. And that goes double for his voice lines. Could someone tell Mundo if there's a knife in Mundo's head? With 27 medical diplomas, Mundo ready to cure what ails you. Sometimes me wonder, who is me to play God? Then me remember, <laughs> me Mundo. And although he comes across a bit smarter than his previous incarnation, that's bound to happen when your previous version only has 50 seconds of dialogue. It's clear the new Mundo is still very, very fucking stupid. Hmm, me should get second opinion. What you think? Ooh, me concur. Huh, great, we agree then. Him nice guy. Whoever chose the sample voice lines for his dev diary a few months ago were on crack or something because they picked literally the worst ones. But now that we have the full package, listening to his almost nine minutes worth of idiocy is... Ah, perfect. It's clear I'm still very unhappy about the first two things, but... I'm overjoyed to see the animators and voiceover team felt the same way I and many others did. And that goes double for anyone who worked on Corporate Mundo. This skin is a goddamn masterpiece now. In retrospect though, if the disconnect between Mundo's character design and his lore was the length of a football field, then the disconnect between those two things combined and his visual direction is the size of goddamn Texas. It's starting to feel like the Mundo rework has no idea what the fuck it even wants to be, with the first three categories recovered representing three completely different artists directions. Is he an anime character? That's what the design says. Is he a tragic anti-hero? That's what the lore says. Is he a goofball comedy champion? That's what his visuals tell me. But hey, at least the visual team pulled through, really bringing the true personality of Mundo to life. And well, animations are all well and good, there's plenty of champions with fantastic animations, voice lines, and visuals, but there's also a lot with those qualities that nobody plays. And a lot of that comes down to gameplay. This rework won't go anywhere unless Mundo's gameplay can also step up to the plate. So how does he fare? Now, as someone who's played Mundo quite a fair amount, I'd say I have pretty reasonable grounds to stand on when judging on how good his new kit is. Oh wait, hold on. There. Now I can judge how good his new kit is. As of writing this script, the Mundo rework has only been on PvE for a mere four days, so although I can't determine how good he'll be in the meta, I can determine one thing. He plays... like Mundo. Definitely plays like Mundo. Almost... Too much. Where Fiddle and Warwick changed just enough to keep the champ feeling fresh while still feeling the same, the Mundo rework feels almost 
exactly the same. Q and Alt are pretty much identical, W and E are only slightly different in how they operate, and he still has his old health regen passive. The major changes are mainly in numbers, less of a focus on health regen, more on health giving AD, but most importantly, his new immunity to crowd control. I am big man. That's hilarious. When you get crowd controlled, instead of being stunned, rooted, etc., you lose a little chunk of max HP instead, and a little canister falls off of Mundo's shoulder. A lot like Poppy Passive or Zack Blood, Mundo can pick up this canister to lower the cooldown of his next CC immunity by 15 seconds. Come late game, the cooldown of it is naturally 15 seconds, so you can imagine picking this up constantly in a team fight makes you CC immune for the majority of the team fight. And let me tell you, it's fucking hilarious. Granted, this CC immunity did come at a cost. The combination of the substantial loss of health regen on his R and losing the passive magic resist on his <laughs> is a major blow to his tankiness. Plus his shift to having bonus AD based on missing health instead of just flat out granting him AD based on maximum health ironically makes him more akin to full tank Olaf. But again, it's a bit too early to tell how he'll actually perform in the meta. Despite what many League tubers would like, like you to believe. believe. I actually don't know if this is going to be enough to bring him into the spotlight again. It seems very minor. But to be honest, I kind of like that. In the same vein why Warwick and Fiddle and Nunu were such successful Ryus is because they do still feel like the old champions. Granted those champions got a lot more flavor added to them than Mundo did, but I can't help but appreciate that Riot kept in the things that made Mundo unique. In the end, is the Mundo rework good or bad? Well, uh, it's a mixed bag. It genuinely feels like several entirely separate groups of people worked on this rework. Maybe management is to blame, maybe variance in artistic direction, maybe miscommunication. It certainly couldn't have anything to do with a global pandemic or anything. If I had to give the new Mundo a rating, I would give it a solid mm, six <laughs> trash pandas out of six. I'm still not fond of the design, but I can live with it. As always, these are just my stupid opinions. Be sure to let me know yours down in the comments. What do you guys think of the Mundo rework? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Do you... love it? In any case, have a good one, lads. I'll see you on the next video.